I started playing goalie when I was about five or six years old. I have two older brothers who needed someone to shoot on, so they, I was volunteered. I got in there and um, actually didn't mind it too much. I was stopping them a lot and uh, it, it became a lot of fun and it just kind of evolved from there. I tried out actually as a defenseman first and I guess I wasn't good enough, I didn't make it. Uh, and our house kind of sat on the border of two townships and I was actually eligible to go to either township. The township that um, cut me um, already had a goalie. The township that didn't cut me, I decided to go try out there and they needed a goalie so I was like man I'm going to play there. So I ended up being goalie and that was about eight years old and stayed in nets the rest of the way. I don't remember a ton at this stage of my life, but I, I do remember that it was it was a lot of fun to get in there and uh, and just create saves because there was no goalie coaching in my day. We were just kind of good little young athletes that went in there and tried to do whatever it was possible, whether it was the old skate save or something like that to make a save. The organization I played for had like a hand-me-down kind of uh, room. It was basically just an old uh, storage room and the oldest goalies, the, the midgets, got to choose first and then the Bantams and then the, you know, and so forth. Yeah, when I was 16 was the first time I bought, it was an old pair of Coopers. I can't remember the exact model, but um, yeah, $300 I think they were. I was fortunate enough to grow up in a sports family, so my father played 17 years professional football in Canada. He taught me a lot about how to train, a lot about how to be mentally tough, whether it was pick up basketball in the driveway with me, uh, he would never let me win. It was always, a, you know, he always had that determination, that confidence to do no matter what sport it was, he used to play handball, he would play football. Um, we would throw a ball in the yard, um, and everything he taught me was to be your best every time, and to believe that you could do it and have the confidence that you could do it. So he couldn't really help me in goal because he was a football player and never really played goal, but what he did help me with was just being really mentally tough and strong and, and, and believing that whatever goal you want to get to, you can. Yeah, I mean, I think if you ask some of my ex-teammates, they, they would probably, especially in the college days, I remember I'd make glove saves and just hold it there, you know, like I'd pose. And, um, there's some pictures of me as a, as a young kid where I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm actually posed and someone threw a puck into the picture and I'm going to catch it. You know, stuff like that is, uh, you know, I'm kind of known for, like, like just having that really good glove hand. I just grew up in a small town outside of Ottawa and played almost sea level hockey if you compare it to today. We were a kind of a country farm type team. Um, didn't win a lot of games against the big city teams which actually helped me as a goalie. I got a lot of shots and a lot of work. Um, then when I was 16 I finally made a double A team. There was no triple A in Ottawa at the time. Um, and that was an Ottawa Valley team which gave me the chance to get looked at by some junior clubs. I was drafted by the Hawkesbury Hawks, Central Junior Hockey League, and fortunate enough to make that team and play one year there. From that team, I went to Northeastern University. I just got a, a scholarship in Hockey East, and Fern Flamin was the coach of that team, who was a, um, a very big, Boston Bruin name. He also played for the Leafs uh, back in the 50s and 60s. So he was instrumental in helping me uh, obviously play well at Northeastern but get drafted to the Pittsburgh Penguins. So in 1985 I was drafted to Pittsburgh and uh, I spent five years with Pittsburgh and there was always, you know, it was a challenge coming from college to pro. It was uh, you were, all, you know, pyramid titans the higher levels you go, so it's always harder to uh, to attain your goals. But I did spend five good years with Pitt, and I went on to uh, play two years with Toronto. And in Toronto, they, you know, it was kind of the same thing. I was just kind of Felix Potvin was there, and I just never really got that chance. 
And then I finally got the opportunity here in St. Louis and um, I ended up playing with Grant Fuhrer who was, you know, a legend in himself and, uh, you know, I learned a ton from him. Um, and after playing here in St. Louis for a year, I went on to a few more teams. I played with the Sharks for a year and then went overseas into Europe. Played uh, three years in Finland. In 1991, the Penguins called me up to the Stanley Cup Finals. So I was with them for the whole playoffs for two months. And that's the year that the Penguins won the Stanley Cup. And Mario Lemieux was on the team, and Paul Coffey, and Brian Trottier, and I mean the list goes on, Mark Recchi. So being around those players for that amount of time uh, gave me a ton of experience. But the biggest memory of all, and I, I don't want to say it's my best memory, but I'll never forget this, is when um, I played here in St. Louis. Um, Wayne Gretzky was traded for, so now I've got to play with Lemieux and Gretzky. Um, and I'll remember Mike Keenan was the coach. We were in Boston, Grant Fuhrer started the game, and I remember I had never played a pro game yet on the ice. And we got down by 4 nothing in the third period. And I remember Keenan yelling down at me, he's like, hey Bruce, you want to play? He just said it just like that. And I said, yeah, let's <laughs> get in there. I'll never remember, I'll never forget skating over the boards and skating to the net and saying to myself, I've waited for this my whole life. You know, so it was a huge, uh, huge moment in my life to finally step on the NHL ice and play. And um, I think it was about a minute into it, Cam Neely had a chance on me and I stopped him. So, you know, I made my first save and um, it, was, it was just, you know, a great memory for me. I really miss, you know, being able to watch a Ken Dryden or a Pete Peters or even a Mike Leute, who They all had their own styles where today, it, even though they do, you know, there's a Lundquist who has his style and a Price who has his style. They all definitely with the new equipment and stuff, they all kind of, you can kind of see a similarity in all these goalies. So I do miss that. But if I was watching today, obviously, I mean, Carey Price is so technically sound and such a competitor and obviously a, a gold medal champion now so he's one of my favorites. After I retired from hockey I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do but I knew that I wanted to stay in the game somehow and I thought you know maybe I should just try coaching. So we settled here in St. Louis and Bryce Salvador called me and asked me to uh, come coach for him, a couple goalies, so I did. And from that, it just snowballed into what is now Racine Goalie Academy. It's great to work with kids because they're, they're a lot of fun. Um, you can mold them in the right way. Uh, you can be a mentor to them. And I think that the nicest thing about coaching for me is, well, there's a couple things, but one is being on the ice with the kids and actually putting them through a workout. And I think when you see a goaltender evolve or have a trouble spot and you can, you can point out things to him and let him on his own kind of find his way out of that and then you actually see him fix the problem, um, that's where I get a lot of joy is helping him there. The second biggest one is when I see them in the rinks, not in the equipment, and they'll come up to me, hey coach, how are you? You know, hey, I won my game last night. Or I'll get a text from, hey coach, I got a shout out, 32 saves. Um, when the kids get to that point with me, I know that I've been the right mentor for them. That they want to connect with me and they want to, um, they want to tell their successes to me. And that's, that's a big part of it. It's been a lot of fun for me to watch the evolution of Luke and Joseph. Um, they're both great kids, number one. Um, with Luke Opilka, uh, I could tell him, you know, any technical tip and he listened and he applied it right away and then he went and worked on it. 
he just worked on it and worked on it, almost to a fault. He worked on some of his stuff to, just to perfect. And he really perfect his, perfected his technique. And I, I truly believe that's why he's getting the opportunity he is today. Um, with Joseph Wall, he has such a passion for the game. Every little detail, whether it's on the ice, off the ice, designing equipment, studying other goalies. I mean, Joseph is so passionate about the position, and I think that's the number one reason why he's going where he is today. You know, they're, they're just two very good, passionate kids. I'm just really happy for them that they're going to get this opportunity. Um, they're doing the work. I might have shown them some tips along the way and helped them, but they, they truly are two kids that have, have taken their game to the next level by applying a lot of the stuff and, and being passionate about it. The biggest thing for goalies is skating. You know, the game of hockey is played on ice and you have to be able to skate. And there's goalie specific skating. And if you can become very mobile on the ice, it's going to help you tremendously. I think for parents, it, the best thing to do is let them try it. If they want to try it, let them try it. Don't hold them back because once they become 15, 16, 17, and it's too late, they're, all, they're going to have that regret, like, man, I wish I would have tried, but my parents didn't let me. I think you have to let them try. And even though there are expenses with equipment and pressures about being the main guy in goal and having to make saves. Um, those can be dealt with. And, you, know, you can always find equipment. You can always piece things together if you need to. But let them try it. Um, give them the chance if they really want to try it. Then they know. And if they, they try it and they like it, the kid is going to let it take off. If they don't like it, they can always go back and being a player, but at least the kid knows.